we're asked to draw the image of the unit square shown in green under the transformation matrix A. There are two ways we can do this. To find the transformation of a vector, which we can also think of as a point, we find the product of the transformation matrix and the vector or the point as a two by one column matrix. So one way would be to find the ordered pairs for each of the vertices of the square, which I've already done here, and then find the transformation of each of these points by determining the product of matrix A and the point, again, as a two by one column matrix. The transformation of zero, zero is still zero, zero, which means under the transformation, the point of the origin does not change. The transformation of one, zero is still one, zero, which means the point one, zero does not change under the transformation. Next, the transformation of zero, one is equal to one, three, which means the point zero, one after the transformation is the point one, three, this point here. And then finally, the transformation of one, one is equal to two, three, which means the point one, one after the transformation is the point two, three. Now that we have the four points that make up the new vertices, we can sketch the transformation of the unit square under the transformation matrix A. This type of transformation is called a shear. Notice this method did take quite a bit of work because we had to find four matrix products. The other approach would be to recognize that because we have the transformation matrix A, the first column is a transformation of the vector E sub one or the vector of one zero, and the second column is a transformation of the vector E sub two or the vector zero one. So because we have the transformation matrix, we know the transformation of the vector E sub one, which is the transformation of the vector one zero, is equal to the first column, which is still the vector one zero, and the transformation of the vector E sub two, which is a transformation of the vector zero one is equal to the second column, which is the vector one three. So going to our unit square, the vector one zero is this vector here, the bottom side of the unit square. After the transformation, the vector is still the vector one zero, which indicates this side of the unit square does not change under the transformation. And then the transformation of the vector zero one equals one three, the vector zero one is the vector along the left side of the unit square along the positive y-axis. The transformation of this vector is the vector one, three, which is this vector here. So knowing these two transformations is enough for us to sketch the entire transformation of the square. The transformation will be the quadrilateral formed by these two vectors, and we know the opposite sides will be parallel, and therefore the transformation of the unit square under the transformation matrix is this quadrilateral we know the opposite sides will be parallel. Notice we get the same transformation under either method, but the second method does take a lot less computation. I hope you found this helpful.